Retro Days. As the days fly by in this, the best month of the year, we here at Retro Days are scrambling to assemble the most festive content we can muster up. While brainstorming ideas, the notion of combining Halloween with one of our more popular topics came up, and so, the unholy merger of Sawan and Forgotten Toys was born. While perhaps not a classic topic like Halloween candy or decorations, toys were always a big part of pretty much every season, and even though they aren't top of mind come October 31st, when clearly all we care about is candy, our monster toys didn't mind waiting patiently until the sugar high wore off. Although the topic itself was a unanimous decision amongst the Retro Days team, there was some debate over the wording of the title. Some felt calling the episode Forgotten Halloween Toys would suggest to the viewers that every toy on the list was specifically related to the holiday, whether by construction, release date, or naming conventions. The first toys that came to mind, for instance, were the things you'd find at the corner store in October, like flexi Halloween creeps, monster jigglers, squeaky pumpkins, and creature wind-ups. We decided that, although very cool, these quarter trinkets weren't exactly what we wanted to cover. So let this serve as a disclaimer, as our choices today are in the spirit of Halloween. You'll see plenty of skeletons, monsters, and gruesome creations on today's list, even if they weren't specifically sold for or inspired by Halloween. Now, after all that, our first pick is kind of related to Halloween, insofar as rubber bats are a staple of decorating for the holiday. Greg Gorey came out in 1979 from Mattel. The advertisements for this 12-inch long Chiroptera were mainly full-page print ads and comic books meant to catch the eye of young boys looking for a gross-out toy to add to their growing collection. With such effective ad copies as Big Bad Vampire Bat and You'll Go Bats for Gregory, we really had no chance. The hook had been dangled with a juicy worm, and the promise of his see-through belly, where we could watch the red liquid flow, <laughs> merely set the hook. The main gimmick, setting Gregory apart from otherwise pervasive rubber bats, was the blood-pumping chest cavity, activated by pressing on his back. The toy also boasted wing-flapping action, soft teeth you could push into your fingers, and feet you could use to hang the toy. Unlike the other, often disappointing toys advertised in comic books, Gregory delivered on every promise, and as an added bonus, came in a stunning box with astounding graphics. Sadly, Gregory only lasted on store shelves for a few years before hitting the bargain bins and then disappearing from retail sale forever. Adding to the allure of this toy, there were also many stories of kids seeing the comic book advertisements too late and finding out the hard way that the giant rubber bat was no longer available. Today, you can occasionally find him for sale online at fairly high prices and often with most of the interior blood dried up and no longer functioning. Another short-lived toy is the Monster Ball series, which is listed online, vaguely, as having been released anywhere between the 1970s to 1990. I tend to place the release date closer to that 1990 listing, considering these universal monster-inspired plastic balls were almost certainly riding the Mad Balls wave of success after their 1987 release. The Monster Balls, released by Ilco, depicted Dracula, the Wolfman, the Mummy, and Frankenstein's monster in all their ballified glory, which is to say they look pretty darn goofy. Apart from the admittedly cool title font, nearly a combination of Fangoria and famous monsters of Filmland, the rest of the package is rather bland. Around the bubble pack, we are treated to suggestions of what we can do with our new toy, and boy, are they doozies! Throw, catch, bounce, hit! Whoa, no way! You're telling me I can throw and catch a ball? Perhaps someone realized their pitch was lacking some pizzazz, so they added monstrous fun for all. Sure. It's easy to see why Monster Balls had a short life and no follow-up series. Still, I found the Wolfman Ball at a yard sale a few years back for a quarter, and I can't say I regret the purchase. Throw, throw catch, catch, bounce, 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 With the Monster Machine and your imagination, you can crank out a creepy creation, the Rotocast Monster Machine. Four, crank in an hour it's dried. You've made Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the Rotocast Monster Machine. 
paints come with it. To make him look fine, it's Gelag Sag and old Frankenstein. The Rotocast Monster Machine by Hansa with five monster molds, paint, and instant muck. Another largely forgotten toy, perfect for the season, is the incredible Monster Machine. This rotocasting toy came out sometime between 1977 and 1979 from either Gabriel Toys or Hansa Toys, depending on location, with the Gabriel branded box being sold in the US. The Monster Machine took a page from Mattel's Thing Maker and Creepy Crawlers, offering young children a way to not only play with a toy, but to also create something. In the case of the Monster Machine, kids were able to cast their very own monster busts using what the company called Instant Muck Casting Compound, which was probably some kind of plaster mix or plastic resin. The kit also came with a set of paints, five molds, and glaze, all of which allowed for personalization of the finalized casts if kids were so inclined. While an incredibly cool concept, and honestly something I kind of want to buy even now, the obvious setback is that once you've cast all five molds, including Frankenstein's Monster, Bigfoot, Jekyll and Hyde, Galaxog, and Hornigore, there was really very little reason to continue using the toy unless you were making the pieces to give away as gifts. Perhaps at some point there was a plan to release new molds to use with the kit, Though I can find no evidence that further additions were ever sold, which can potentially explain the short lifespan of the otherwise fantastic toy. Hey, hold on for 15 seconds, voiceover John, on Cam John here for a simple request of our viewers. If you're enjoying today's topic, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and clicking that notification bell so you never miss another nostalgic moment with us here at Retro Days. Okay, get back to work, you slouch. Supernatural! Now you can join the battle between brave Lionheart and evil Skull and their eerie ghostlings. Lion, you're dying! Now, Master! They change to fight with ghostly might. Turn them into the light and they change into even more powerful creatures. Now, the mine in me is free! Take this! Ah! Supernaturals! Lionheart, Skull and Ghostlings sold separately. New from Tonka. Next up on our list of forgotten toys, we have Tonka's Supernaturals, first released in 1987. The surprising connection this toy line has to Halloween, besides featuring a bevy of holographic monsters, is that the first issue of the UK comic came out on October 31st, 1987, complete with a free double-sided skull mask. Additionally, some of the characters evoke themes of Halloween. Phil Boyce writes, the evil Supernaturals had their own ghostlings. Scary Cat, the witch, could change into a hissing cat. Rags was both an Egyptian pharaoh and a mummy. Weird Wolf was a punk teen and a teen wolf. And Vampa was a vicious vampire that could become a bat. Speaking personally, these toys were never forgotten for me because they were some of my favorites as a kid. Holograms were all the rage in the 80s, and slapping them on a series of spooky figures with glow-in-the-dark weaponry was a surefire way to separate me from my allowance. Unfortunately, I lost my figures long ago, in the dark of a Halloween night. What's a discussion of Halloween toys without at least one gross-out entry? Well, you're in luck, because a super-rare, often-forgotten toy from 1981 called Ooze It fits the bill perfectly. Released by OI, which literally stands for Ooze It Incorporated, this weird, squishy green figure came packaged with a canister of red ooze that kids would fill the figure with. When it came time to play, you just squeezed the ugly little guy until the red goop came spilling out of all the holes in its face. There really wasn't more to it than that, which perhaps is why the toy was so short-lived on shelves. Had I known about this spectacular toy as a kid, I would have absolutely purchased one to go right along with Grigori and his blood-pumping action. Given the rare nature of Uzit, finding one for less than a couple of hundred bucks is unlikely, making it yet another expensive collectible on this list. Know this, young prince. The skeleton warriors are led by foul men and dark and will stop at nothing. Once they were men but served the force so evil it devoured everything, leaving only their bones. They are advancing towards you, young prince. Oracula, armed to the teeth. Dr. Cyborg, the high-tech horror. The slow but dangerous dagger. All of your allies have fallen, save Lightstar and his companions. Skeleton warriors, they're bad to the bone. As far as I'm concerned, skeletons and Halloween go hand in hand making the forgotten toy Skeleton Warriors an adequate choice for our next selection. 
This series was released in 1994 by Playmates, based on a 13-episode cartoon series of the same name for CBS created by Landmark Entertainment Group and Gary Goddard. The wonderfully macabre characters had names like Baron Dark, Shriek, Aracula, and Grimskull. The packaging boasted that the toys were collectible and individually numbered, as well as coming packaged with mini comics and folded posters. Unsurprisingly, as this was the case for many of the cartoon-driven toys back then, there was a full merchandising rollout along with the animated series that depicted the characters on lunchboxes, trading cards, clothes, and all manner of goods. There was also a Marvel comic book series, a video game for the Sega Saturn and PlayStation, and a board game. The toys even scored a second series run, but the ratings for the cartoon, and perhaps interest in the merchandise, caused the Skeleton Warriors' reign to end there. Perhaps the rarest and most forgotten of all the toys on our list today is Meet the Uglies. These unassuming gross-out toys, created by Creata in 1986, are largely regarded as a mashup of other popular toys of the era, like Mad Balls and Garbage Pail Kids. Still, despite the obvious inspiration, these figures were incredibly creative and alluring to monster-loving kids of the 80s. The back of the package claims that there are 12 figures, though there is some question as to if all 12 were ever made. It's always somewhat interesting to see toys that sold for $1.99 and even less when discounted become worth hundreds of dollars due to rarity. These little rubber figures have some cool designs, but they appear less enticing when you see eBay listings of $200, $300, $400, and even $500. Still, I wouldn't complain if I found one sitting at the bottom of my trick-or-treat bag one magical Halloween. Now, as with all of our Forgotten Toys episodes, I'm sure there are many who remember some or maybe even all of the toys we've highlighted today. Vintage toy collectors and those interested in the merchandise of yesteryear will often have a broader knowledge base than the layman, but I do hope we found something to tickle that far off memory of a toy you perhaps haven't thought about since you were a child. Similarly, I hope we found some toys that helped to get you in the Halloween spirit, as October lasts only so long and now is the time to play with all of your monster toys. Of course, as always, I need to know what other forgotten toys remind you of Halloween. Do you have any that you'd like to put out for display this time of year? Well, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. And if you enjoy our content, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and maybe even activating that ubiquitous notification bell, as it really does make a huge difference. Let's meet again next week to celebrate yesteryear and Halloween right here on Retro Days. Clicky, clicky.